Hello, my dear, dear RTAFers, and welcome to another episode of the RTAF Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Norris, and this week we have Ryan Connell as our guest. Ryan is a gallerist, an art curator, and collector. Uh, His new space just opened up here in Denver. It's called Ryan Joseph Gallery, and they featured opening solo show from Andrew Davis, who was the guest on episode 73, a couple episodes ago. And in this episode, we talk about Ryan's journey from selling artwork for his friends for free, I might add, to opening up his own gallery here in Denver. It's an inspiring story, and the moral there is to follow your interests and your heart and not be so worried about making a buck. And we also discuss pricing paintings, uh, how the art world works, and some of the rackets therein. Talk about Ryan's superpowers and getting in to some healthy routines. So please, if you've got a chance, go check out Ryan Joseph Gallery in Denver. I'll put links to Ryan's Instagram as well as a website. And patrons will get the in-person video featuring some of, well, just one painting from Andrew Davis that's up in the gallery. And if you're interested in becoming a patron, head on over to patreon.com slash RTAF podcast and check out the tiers available. They're starting at just $4 a month, and it really helps keep this thing going. And I want to shout out all my current patrons. Thank you guys so much. Couldn't do it without you. There's eight of you currently, and it helps a lot. Not only uh, monetarily, but uh, just just emotionally, uh, psychology, psychologically. You know what I mean? It's good to know that there are some people out there who care, and I appreciate you all very much. And yeah, let's jump right into it. Thanks again for being here. Here, 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 here is Ryan Connor. Yeah, Ryan Connell. What's up, dude? Man, you know, just trying to live the dream. Hell yeah. Yeah, looks like you are. So we're here in uh, in Ryan Joseph Gallery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brand new. It's brand new. Brand new. Still smells fresh in here. Yeah, <laughs> fresh paint. Fresh floor. Fresh drywall. Yeah, all of it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and right here for people watching video, and thank you, Patreon subscribers, We've got one of Andrew Davis's unsold piece pieces from the show last week. Yeah, one of only three left. Yeah, yeah. What's this one called? Echo. Echo. Okay, yeah. nice. Let me try and turn you up a little bit, man. Uh, sound check. <laughs> <laughs> check one two. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit. I'm just gonna keep going lower and lower as you turn it up higher. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, man. Congratulations, too, first of all. Thank you. It's good to see you, like, like have your own space now. And, and yeah, I think that we probably met, I think probably actually through, like, Jake and the, the Apex guys back in the day. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, you, you are a, a gallerist. Is that what you would say? I think so, yeah. yeah. That's what I like to say sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, gallerist. The professional. Yeah, where you're a gallery owner, I guess, without mm-hmm. saying you're a gallery owner. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, yeah, but pretty much a one man show. So sweet, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always curious, like how you got to, to where you're at, like how, how anybody that I have on the show, like their journey and their story. So maybe if you could 
I don't know where you want to start, but like <laughs> just uh, just talk about you know how you got interested in art in the first place and yeah. kind of your path along the way. Yeah, I'll give like a some Cliff Notes versions. Um, Sweet. I think I've always been a fan of art uh, in general. Um, I didn't really realize I was collecting artwork until <clears throat> I thought back and realized that I listened to a lot of metal mm -hmm. and growing up, like I would collect like the booklet inserts because they had crazy artwork that I didn't see anywhere else. Yeah. And so that was like another fun aspect just when I was buying CDs back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, but so always been like a fan of artwork. Uh, my grandmother on my father's side, uh, is a collector, um, and was friends with artists. So I was kind of like around it when I was a child. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like super in my face about it. Um, but I think the way that I got into it is, uh, I had friends when I lived in Austin, uh, that were in the art scene there. And I started buying some pieces when I had the money to, um, and I also had stumbled across, you know, the, the greats of Mars and Oliver and Damon. Yeah. And when I was introduced to them, <clears throat> it was like, you know, the sixth degree of separation where it was like somebody who was directly friends with them. And that's how they had all these originals that I was around. And I was like, what the fuck is yeah. going on? Like, what, what is this stuff? You know? Yeah. And when I did some more research on them, I realized that their paintings were, you know, crazy and then they were always sold immediately you couldn't get a hold of them prints were super hard to find and uh i remember when i first started collecting i think i was collecting prints before i was getting originals and i was like grabbing any of their prints that i could find anywhere um and then it moved on to originals from friends and uh xander lampkin uh you know one of my boys from i don't know we've been friends for over a decade now i think mm -hmm. um he was painting and i always liked to support him so anytime he was throwing up something new, I was like, I got to have it. Let me get it. You know, cause yeah. I loved it. And then I also was trying to support him as much as possible. Um, totally. and at a certain point, like I would have friends over and they would like see, you know, what was on my walls and they'd be like, where did all this come from? Like, how do I get it? Yada, yada, yada. And, um, you know, eventually I had one friend that was like super serious. Like, where do I, how do I get some of these pieces particularly like of Xander's? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was like, well, let me make a phone call. And I called Xander and I was like, what do you have anything available right now? And he was like, man, I've got like, I don't know, a dozen pieces that are just sitting around. And I was like, put them in the car. We're going to take a trip down to San Marcos, which is not very far from Austin. It's like a 30 minute drive down South. Mm -hmm. Uh, we went to go visit our friend. Um, and you know, we ended up selling him, I don't know, six to eight pieces nice and so that was like my first like art dealing if you will that i i wasn't making any money off of it at all i didn't have that desire at in any point like i just wanted to support xander you know yeah. get him out there more um am i talking okay am i still too soft can you bring it just like closer to you how's that that's way better that's better okay yeah, yeah. there we go <laughs> and make sure you're kind of like pointed at it okay yeah i just keep doing soft spoken man just yeah. whispering all the time no, that's okay just trying to whisper sweet nothings in everyone's ears yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so i mean that was kind of like one of the first things i was doing uh and then i slowly like the circle of friends that i kept were artists or other art dealers or involved in the art scene at some some form or fashion was that was that intentional uh, no, no, it just, just because you love the art yeah. you found yourself around those people. Yeah. I just started nice. hanging out with them more. I feel like they were just the, the people that I was like vibing with the most for sure and was just easier to click with. Um, and so, you know, the people that you like to be around are the people you want to be around. So yeah, for I think sure. that's kind of how it kind of started to fall into place. Yeah. Um, and then you fast forward a little bit and like, I was traveling a lot at the time, uh, and, or let me back up some, I'm sorry. In like 2014, like the momentum show happened for Mars yep. and the boys with further, um, yep. here in Denver. And I used it as like a excuse to come up to Denver for the first time. Um, nice. I was in, in that time frame from what I was talked about with Xander until like this point was like helping some art friends, like play some pieces here and there, but just doing it for, you know, basically for fun and to help them. Mm -hmm. And then when I came up to see that show, um, I mean, were you at that show? I feel like I was. I was like, everyone was at that show. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I'll never forget that yeah, show. Yeah. It was a crazy <laughs> fucking show. Yeah. I can cuss on this, right? I don't oh, know absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was, a, it was a gnarly show, you know? And um, I remember Mars had these little molecules, you know, the little, the mini ones that he mm -hmm. first came out with there. And I had already been talking to him online a little bit, but just, you know, fanboying out at him. We didn't have like an established relationship or anything. But uh, 
when I saw them at the show, I was like, Hey, how do I get these molecules? Cause they were like in my price range. You know, I was like, I can afford something of Mars's now. Like what's up, dude, let me grab these. Yeah. And he was like, ah, you know what? Hang on. Let me see. I don't know if we even have them to sell yet. These just might be just to display, but we're going to sell some later on. And, um, a couple months of like talking with him, uh, and like kind of pestering him about like, Hey, can I get those molecules? Like what's going on? Yeah. Uh, he was like, Hey, uh, you've been patient and you've been persistent, you know, like, um, I have the sets coming now. I'm going to let you have first dibs on however many you want. Nice. And I interpreted it as like, I know a lot of friends that have, or want Mars stuff, but don't have access to it. So I was like, I'm definitely going to get like a set of each one of these materials, but I'm going to ask all my friends too. And so I asked a lot of my friends if they wanted some and I ended up having like, I don't know, there's, there were 48 sets in total and I had 24 of them sold basically. And so when I got on the phone with him, he was like, yeah, how many sets do you want? Like two or three. And I was like, Oh, I don't know if I misunderstood you, but like, uh, it's got like 24 sets that I could sell for you right now. And he was like, what do you just want to sell these things for me? And I was like, Whoa, really? Mm. And he was like, yeah, like, I'll just, you know, you'll take these 24 and I'll give you some other ones and you can start doing your thing with them. And I was like, this is fucking nuts. This is my favorite artist. Like letting me, you yeah, know, yeah. sell one of his things. I was like, okay, cool. And that really like, you know, was a jump starter in addition to like what I was doing already. Cause again, I wasn't making money off of these things, but then he allowed me to like make a commission off of them as well. Yeah. And so that was like my like official, like I've made money off of art type of thing, which was a neat addition. What a, what a huge, what a huge break Yeah. or just right time, right place. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I did nothing other than just pester the guy yeah, you yeah. Know, until he was finally like, here, yeah. here's some molecules. And then, you know, again, I still don't know to this day, I should probably clarify with him since I talked to him so often and just be like, well, did you mean just like, here's a couple sets for you? Or yeah, did, yeah. did you mean like however many you want, you can sell to some of your friends and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, That's so cool. that was pretty fortunate. Uh, and then, you know, I had a bunch and I was like traveling at the time. And so like I was seeing people, you know, all over the place. I had friends around the country that I was visiting. And so like mm -hmm. I would have the molecules with me and then prints or whatever from other friends or pieces that were small enough to like put in the car. And they were like, just see what you can do with them. And so like I was just kind of networking around and selling pieces and then meeting up with other artists that like I hadn't met physically, but like had online, you know, relationships with. Yeah. Um, and you know, one thing would lead to another, you know, like, Hey, can you help me sell some works again? You know, just like before, or like, can you help you're going this over here? Can you take these with your car? If you have enough room in it and like deliver these pieces here, whether it was to a gallery or to a collector or whatever. Um, and so you're kind of like a mobile art salesman, I guess to a degree point. at that point. Yeah, yeah. Which was weird. Uh, is this still like 2014, 2015? Yeah. Or probably around that time. Okay. Um, and then I think you know, I came up to Denver for that show. Uh, mm -hmm. and it coincided with a couple of new conscious shows that were also happening. Um, and met a bunch of people there too, that were in the scene, you yeah. know, and just like around that I didn't have, you know, a physical introduction with until this point. Um, and you know, at new conscious, Kurt was booking, uh, shows with people that were like friends of mine or that like, I just really was a fan of. Yeah. Uh, and so like I made, you know, an excuse to be able to like, I got to come up next month now, you know, I was driving mm -hmm. up from Texas, like 16 hours one way by myself. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think, uh, again, like I was friends with like Calyptus and Saib and a couple other people at the times in CT and, uh, I, was just coming up to support. And at one point, like I drove like, cause Calyptus is in, in New Jersey and I drove right. from Texas to New Jersey and picked him up and all of his body of work that he was having at new conscious and drove it really. Yeah. All the way to Denver and wow. Helped set up the show. And then I helped sell a couple pieces and like, I didn't do this other than the fact that, you know, you wanted to. yeah, I wanted to and Calyptus asked me, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, um, that's so awesome, man. Like y you don't really hear about that kind of thing happening a lot in, in, in the art industry and, and even in other, other like entertainment arts and entertainment industries, you know, like, yeah, not a lot of people just do it for the love, but you kind of like, it seems like you kind of alley-ooped, uh, like your love of, of the art into like a career. Yeah. Is that I'm, accurate? Pretty much. Yeah. I, again, it was like right time and place. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Kurt saw that I was coming around often. Uh, and like, basically it was like, you know, the artists, you know, the collectors, um, you've been helping and like, 
you know, I didn't even know you were helping until like now, you know, I have three or four shows in that you've been yeah. up here. And he's like, I, you know, I could use some help here and basically like made me an offer to like, you know, do you want to come up and like take the gallery over? You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I was like, again, beside myself, even more than I was with Mario, where I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, yeah. who's like somebody's offering me a gallery to take over and one that I've been frequenting and like my friends are showing at and stuff. And I was yeah. like, I was like, OK, um, I'm going to think about it. And I waited like 30 days and then got back to him. And I was like, yeah, you know, we have to step up some some guidelines and everything. But yeah, I'm down. You know, what were your it. what were your like responsibilities? Everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. from booking the shows to handling the. uh the artist relations to the collectors, um, mm -hmm. to the setup, you know, to all the fine details. Um, and you were, you were there at the second iteration of new conscious or even at the, the first? first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So Kurt made me the offer in 2015. Okay. Um, gotcha. in, in March mm -hmm. and I accepted, I guess April, uh, nice. but I was doing it from a, like a distance in Texas still. So like for the first, I don't know, six months, I was driving up every month to do a show with wow. him and I was like working, you know, remotely from Texas and like helping him do stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I finally like made the move up here like shortly before 2016 and nice. yeah, was there at the first location and into the second iteration and then into the third, mm -hmm. um, until yeah, we are here now in 2021 where I parted ways in 2020 and decided to do my own thing. Cause I've, you know, it was always a goal and a dream and yeah, you know, just again, right time, right place. So uh, I hope that kind of summarizes yeah. no, that's <laughs> the journey. I mean, that's kind of like a cliff notes version without getting too crazy detailed, but yeah, it's just been, I think just right time, right place, you yeah. know? Just so, you, so you've established all these, uh, like relationships with artists and collectors too. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, what do you look for, if anything, in an artist's work or, or, or even maybe it's something outside of their work that, that like interests you about them? Um, is it just the fact that their work can sell or is it, is it that thing that, you know, like it's hard to put your finger on like what makes art good, right? Yeah, I think so too. I, I mean, and, but I love asking that question because it's impossible to answer. So a lot of times I get like, <laughs> You're just trying to Five stump your guests. answers. <laughs> yeah. Not trying to stump you, but like, is, is there anything you look for in particular or is it just something that like, that you like? Um, so when curating, I, I think that, uh, I don't ever go for the flavor of the week. You know, if mm -hmm. a piece is selling, like an artist is doing really well and sells, like that's cool. That's mm -hmm. great. Um, but the way that I curate is that I usually, want to book shows with artists that I would have in my own personal collection. Right. Um, and you know, when I'm finding artists, I'm usually like having a moment with some of their artwork, you know, where I'm just like in a trance by it, you know, or we're just really taken back by it. Yeah. Um, and so that's like number one for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, number two is, is probably, um, their motivation. Because yeah, yeah. I, I feel like what unintentionally I have found is that a lot of artists that I work with are painting whether they're trying to make money off of it or not. Like yeah. whether they were doing it for a living, like doesn't matter. Like right. they they are painting because they want to and they feel like they need to. You know, right, it's, yeah. it's their favorite pastime to do. And it's not necessarily because they're trying to like make a statement. It's just that's what they do for fun. You know, right. some people play video games, some people, you know, I don't right. know, do motocross. So that's a terrible example, but you know what I mean? <laughs> like they, everyone has their fun things that they do. And like, yeah. that's what they, they do it for the love, I guess is what I'm getting around to. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, well, that's perfect because like, obviously you were doing what you were doing for the love for a couple of years at least, yeah. you know? And, and yeah, that, that makes total sense. Like, yeah. and I think that that's just, you know, in a roundabout way, that's like great advice for anybody starting any discipline. It's like try and hold on to the thing that made you start it in the first place. Right. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, try to remember the reason why you're doing it. You know, you can get lost and distracted by a bunch of stuff and yeah, it's easy to forget. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think those are the, the main, the main two. And I don't ever get attracted to like one specific style of art. Cause I like a pretty diverse range. Yeah. Um, and typically a lot of the artwork that I tend to gravitate towards is like a combination of like at least two to three different styles. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, I'm not, you know, an art history major. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I don't have like the super in-depth formal knowledge that a lot of other people do, uh, which probably angers some individuals. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I feel personally that a lot of artwork that is like focused on one specific like genre or aesthetic is, has been on repeat for a long time. For sure. And that's not to take anything away from them because we still see new stuff that is fantastic. That's already not necessarily been done, but you know, it's a new iteration of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I feel like for us to enjoy the progression is to like take a little bit from different, yeah. you know, things that we really like. And then like Andrew's paintings are a great example of that. Absolutely. You know? I mean, he's doing his own research, if you will, on mythology or reading poems or studying ancient Renaissance pieces or, or sculptures, you know, and then yeah. taking a little bit of what he likes from each one of those and interpreting them his own way and then making something new out of it. Yeah. So I think a lot of the artwork that I tend to gravitate towards is something like that, you know, like where a it's mashup of styles. Exactly. Yeah. I was, yeah, I, uh, that's what I like to make too. I think yeah. it's like, I don't want to just, I don't know. I, I borrow from from like a lot of different artists I've noticed, you know, I, I'll be like doing a thing and I'm like, oh, that looks like so-and-so or yeah. that, you know, this part reminds me of a part I saw in someone else's painting. Yeah. And like not in, even in an intentional way until it's like already on the canvas, you know? Right. Yeah. But I think that that's, I mean, for me personally, it's like opinion time. But, uh, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that that's my favorite type of art too, is, is someone who can like mash up different styles in a way, you know? Yeah. And come up with their own, come up with their own voice. Yeah. yeah. Like David Bowie is one of my favorite, like rock and, you know, rock and roll, but like he has like later stuff is like jazzy and orchestral and like, you know, there's rock, there's blues, there's funk, there's disco all that shit yeah i mean i think it just allows for the room for experimentation and progression yeah because you know? then you can really like dive into other areas that you weren't in before mm -hmm. and just be like i played around with this now i want to see like where i can go further or i'm done with this for a little while and i'm bored and i want to try something else you know and it's not doesn't get stagnant no and it's not too much of a hard shift either you know because yeah. you've already had maybe some elements of something in there before so you can see how you could you know make the bridge yeah so yeah absolutely is there so do people ever come to you um and ask for your help or your advice or anything like that any artists in which way like what kind of capacity well like um i don't know i guess you you just opened your gallery but yeah. has anyone ever showed you their portfolio and been oh, like, like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah for sure yeah. um i mean I've had uh, like a good amount of people, you know, uh, mm -hmm. inquire about like making submissions or something like that, mm -hmm. um, or just wanting to share their artwork, which I'm always open to looking at art regardless of where it's at and whatever level or stage. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I mean, I like to work with artists that are emerging or, and if I, you know, can very, very well established ones and everyone in between. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's definitely been individuals that have like asked me to like take a look at some stuff. Um, I don't know if they're asking like for help on anything, but mm -hmm. Um, or, or if they're trying to like get a show out of it or, yeah, I mean, it happens. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of inevitable. Uh, I'm in a fortunate, unfortunate for them. I'm in a position where I'm already kind of booked out for quite some time. Yeah. Um, my, how, how, how long are you booked out? Uh, well into 2023, I'm sorry, 2022. I'm, oh, okay. I'm starting to get into 2023 too. Oh wow. Yeah. Nice. Um, I mean, everything that was supposed to happen last year, obviously transitioned over. Gotcha, so yeah. it took up a lot of this year and then I already was into the next year last year as well. So, okay. you know, just the pieces fall where they're supposed to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm always down to look at artwork, but a lot of times I just have to, you know, uh, politely tell them I, I can't right now you mm -hmm. know but i'm always like when i'm looking at them i'll make a note and you know uh, if if i see something that is a good fit for a group show or whatever mm -hmm. later on then i'll definitely be in contact nice so that's cool yeah. yeah how do you how do you feel about like the the kind of gatekeeper role that gallery owners play it's fucking weird man yeah like, it's super weird yeah, like yeah. i don't I've, i i feel you i don't think that i don't know i know that i have a different perspective uh, and maybe business model than a lot of other galleries do, um, mm -hmm. because a lot of them are like, you know, monetarily focused, mm. uh, which I 
obviously it's a part, but I, it's not my main focus. Like I could care less about making money on the art. Mm. Um, we have to pay the bills one way yeah. or another, but, uh, you know, if that's your like main motivation, then it's not doing it for the right reasons. Um, yeah, yeah. but I know that there's other galleries, like we were talking earlier off mic, but you know that there's spaces in New York and I'm sure other places that are like, yeah, we'll take an artist submission. And then they'll tell the artist like, yeah, you, you can show with us. You're in, you know? And then they say like, yeah, well, let's, let's do this. And what do I got to do? And then they're like, okay, well, here's a $10,000 entrance fee <laughs> and all this other kind of crazy shit. And you're like, what? Dude? That's so, that's so crazy. When you told me that, um, I, it's not like unbelievable at all like at all of course like everything eventually turns into that right yeah (laughs) i mean it's just mind-boggling but but it's like what the fuck yeah like yeah it just makes it seem like much more of a racket i suppose for sure yeah i mean i think that the 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 perspective needs to be flipped a lot for like maybe galleries because a lot of them have this attitude of like talking down to artists to a degree of like you know this is why you need me i'm going to take you places and shit when it's really the other way around exactly you know like as a gallery like i'm fortunate to be able to work with the artists that i work with and like it it's not something that i take lightly you know i'm like this is great you know because essentially like it's their hard work that i'm showcasing and it's helping me build my brand yeah uh but building my brand's not something that i really care too much about i just want to work with these artists and i like like to show the art and ideally yeah. bring in things that people here haven't seen yet in person so mm-hmm. like it's expanding the culture but i think that it's just wild to me that like you know there's this elitist mentality of like you know, who are you and why am I talking to you? You know, like like you're lucky you should be talking to me or that we want to work with you at all. And it's it's really should be the other way around. Like I think a a lot more galleries should be vocalizing their uh, gratitude to the artists of like, thank you so much for wanting to do this with me. You have a lot of choices out there. There's a lot of galleries, you know, like it's great that we are able to have a working relationship like this, you know, and hopefully it's synergistic where we can continue. Man, that's so refreshing to just because you have uh, uh like from my perspective you have like a very accurate take on what's going on right like uh you know all us artists we have like online we have our presence online um even it, now like there's nfts and stuff another avenue of like of income to to be had and yeah i just like you said just to repeat what you said like that whole attitude of like you need us just i don't think it it it, not only is it like weird and and kind of elitist but it's it's also like not true at all it's it's super out of date now now that we have social media like it's so easy that you can connect with anybody yeah you know like i mean there's plenty of collectors or anybody that can just go directly to an artist and if the artist isn't has too crazy of a following or they have the time, you know, they can go through the request box or their inbox and just like make their own sales if they want to, you know, I know that there's different levels where like they're just too busy or it's not their focus. You know, they want to just focus on the art and then that could come into play where they have a manager or they have a gallery that's handling it for them. But yeah, I think it's, it's an outdated attitude to have for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I I guess like, and I always play devil's advocate with (laughs) things that I literally just said, but, uh, (laughs) it's it's good to question yourself. Yeah. But I guess like the flip side of that is, is kind of like, um, if the galleries are in contact with like collectors who are down to spend the big, big dollars, I guess, Mm -hmm. then that's a thing, you know? Yeah. And then it kind of gets like vetted around, you know? It, so tell me if you think this is a, is an accurate take. What it seems like to me is like that there's, there's maybe about like in the like top tier art world, right? Like that there's maybe about like 300 or so people who are like collecting works over like 20 grand or something like that. And, and then it's kind of like this, not even elitist, but just this club of like, if one person likes you, maybe you're, you got kind of a foot in the door. Yeah. And if it spreads around, like you could be well established for like the rest of your life. Is that right? Or am I, am I tripping? The old, the old handshake. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some truth to a degree on that. I think mm-hmm. it's a lot more than just like 300 people though. There's, yeah, yeah, okay. there's plenty of people that have a good amount of money to spend, um, on, you know, artwork, which is as, as a luxury purchase, uh, yeah. that, 
do it privately. You know, I mean, everything when you're spending your money in, on something that you want to be an heirloom, you probably want to keep it private anyways. Private collection. Yeah. 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 You know, you get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've heard of that before. Yeah. I think so too. <laughs> uh, but I mean, they're out there. I mean, we have, you know, so many people in the country are just worldwide. And again, social media, being able to connect everybody. Yeah. Um, anybody that f- from all walks of life, you know, has the ability to purchase some artwork. So I think that again, back in the day, that probably was the case yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, and then nowadays, you know, I think it's, it's changed quite a bit. Totally. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Again, it's a, it's a strange, the art world, art world is like so big and there's so many different levels to it. Um, yeah, definitely. but it's, it's super weird that there are just people out there that want to buy a trophy for their wall versus like buying uh, something that they absolutely love and they want to stare at for, yeah. you know, an indefinite amount of years. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the whole people craze, uh, on the, on the NFT front kind of proved that that mindset is, is a little more prevalent in the art world. I feel like for sure. Like the hype game is real, dude. Yeah. Yeah. When you snatch up a people and then sell it immediately. Yeah. Like that's crazy. The flipper world is also like, it's super strange. Yeah. It's yeah. Are, do you have any, like, did you ever like dip your toe in that world or see any? No, I don't. Weirdness? I mean, I've seen plenty of weirdness. I still see it. Yeah. You know, uh, it's fine. It's a different business model. It's mm-hmm. not one that I really jive with. Uh, mm-hmm. it's not one that from what I understand, a lot of artists jive with, um, you know, they, they'd like to see artwork being bought and then held for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're buying it again cause you love it and you want it not because you're looking at it as like, Oh, if this is an investment I can make some quick money off of real quick. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I know there's plenty of galleries out there that have, uh, non resale contracts or oh, really, yeah. Or there's like a, a time limit to being able to do that. Mm. Um, you That's know, cool. I've, I've heard about, then you're buying it for the right reasons. Exactly. Or the, you know, what we think are the right reasons. Yeah, right. I mean, what are the right reasons, but yeah, you yeah. know, the, the better reasons. Yeah. But I mean, I've even heard about, certain artists that have done like uh limited edition drops on you know sculptures or vinyls or prints or whatever mm-hmm. uh that sell out super quick and they'll they have like their own team that's monitoring you know like ebay let's say as an example and then they'll start seeing those items that just dropped that, yeah. be relisted and then they'll do their research and find out who was who and then they'll cancel orders and they'll refund you know money and just yeah. then they're on a blacklist where like you can't buy these anymore because you're just buying it you're taking it away from people that want it for the right reasons. I've heard of you that. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's wild, man. I mean, it's crazy. I don't... It's kind of like ticket scalping. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're one and the same, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's the it's a different business model. It works for some people. You know, it's it's interesting. But I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. You know, I'd rather yeah. have a conversation with the artist and be like, is this okay with you, you yeah. know, to do? Or at um, least hold on to it for several years or something you yeah. know or, or an appropriate amount of time and if you know you want to make room for something else then right yeah yeah i think that's appropriate like what we're talking about is like buy it flip it yeah within buy more yeah flip it within yeah. a month or so yeah. which yeah i mean i don't i personally have never done that i've definitely sold some pieces out of my collection but it was after maybe like five years or so and i was like okay yeah you mean as a collector you know that's your taste changes it's over appropriate time. yeah you yeah. grow just like the artists grow yeah um you you get into a new space that you don't have enough room for anymore right. and then maybe you can't display all this stuff so then there's pieces where you're just like somebody should be able to appreciate these yeah i don't have the space i might not for a while i'll let somebody else take it yeah. you know give it a good home um so yeah i don't know i've, I've never done it myself um yeah, yeah. anything that i've sold uh that hasn't been in the gallery like i have a relationship with those the artists or you know it's coming from a private collection where somebody is in those circumstances where they're just like hey you know it's mm-hmm. time for me to let these go right right and then we go from there right so did you collect any nfts in the past I, couple of months i didn't you know didn't. yeah no, i mean you're, I, you're more into the physical art i am yeah, yeah. i don't think that uh, I mean, I can't say that I never will get an NFT, but yeah, yeah. like, I don't know that anything's going to replace like a physical thing for me to put on my wall and like mm-hmm. stare at and like sit and like really like dig into, you know, yeah, look yeah. at it from all the different angles, get up close, you know, get mm-hmm. get far away, look at the brush strokes. You yeah. Know? There's definitely something different about a screen versus, versus like a canvas. For obviously. sure. Obviously. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's cool that you can zoom in as much as you want, but it's still like, I mean, we're looking at our screens every day for hours on end and it just like. I don't know it there's it's I don't know I don't know how to describe it I feel like it's not tangible just what you can 
get from being in front of a piece of artwork versus like on your phone. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. maybe we're just desensitized to a certain degree where it just doesn't hit the same, you know? Mm-hmm. And like when you go out of your way to come and like see a piece of artwork, like you're having to make a special trip, whether it's to a museum or someone else's house right. or to a gallery or wherever. Um, and, you know, I think it just, there's something special that's added to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we lose a little bit of something uh, as well as gaining it with like convenience, you know, mm-hmm. like with the phone, it's always in your pocket or, or wherever. And all you got to do is be like, oh, I'll search so-and-so. But to like really see a painting in real life is, you're right, it's something else. Yeah. I mean, we can look at photos of pieces like all day long, but then you come and you see them in person and it's never captured the same. Yeah. You know, I mean, we can't replicate what our eyes see with something digital yet. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I don't think that we're going to, I don't know. It's, I'd rather just look at a piece, I guess, to get back to your question. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So, Yeah. Nice. I also, I mean, I, got, I jumped into the crypto world and then I was like, okay, I'm in pretty deep right now for my liking, you know, and then, you know, watching, watching everything go up and down and up and down. And you're just like, I got anxiety right now. I got to step away from this and just let it be, you know, and then yeah. getting into NFT things, you're like, okay, I could spend some of that money I already have in there right now, but then I want to replace it. And I don't know, it's, it's a whole, I don't know. It's just adding a lot of stress. Yeah. 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 So I feel like I'm just, there are plenty of other works that I want in person also from different artists. And I feel like I have a list that I'm just like, okay, who's up next that I would try, I want to try to get something from, you know? So I feel like I'm focused more on the physical stuff than I am the digital at the moment. Yeah. But I think NFTs are great for a lot of reasons. Yeah. 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 I I've talked about them to death on here. I don't think we're going to go into that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But I do want to ask you about crypto, even though it's not art related. Sure. When did you, when did you buy crypto? Uh, I mean, not that long ago. Right. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, probably yeah. like a year or so ago. Nice. Um, nice. And I missed the big, you know, spike. Big yeah, exactly. Whatever. When yeah. it was first coming around back in 2000, what, 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, it, I was trying to grasp the full understanding of it, you know, mm-hmm. and ju- justify spending money on it or investing money, I should say. Um, but I guess the uncertainty and like lack of knowledge stopped me for a while, Mm -hmm. you know, and then eventually like I did more research. I talked to a lot more people that I knew closely that were in it and had been doing it for a while and made good money on it and just kind of picked their brains more to where I felt confident enough to be able to like throw down some. Nice. But I feel like, I mean, I'm still small potatoes in comparison to a lot of other people that have thrown down. Like, yeah, Yeah, I've, I've got one friend who, I'm like, oh, I bought, you know, $100 worth of chain link or something like that. And he's mm-hmm. like, I'm 10,000 deep. And I'm like, oh, shit, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But that's how you make your money, you yeah, know, yeah. like that or substantial, you know, return on investment. So and I'm like, I don't know if I can do that yet. Like a thousand dollars is a lot, you know. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Same. I mean, I did buy $100 worth of Dogecoin. Did you? Yeah. When it was like seven cents. So that's fun to see. Uh-huh. But then again, I talked to some other friends and they're like, I'm 10,000 deep on that. And I'm like, holy shit. Like, yeah, it's you're doing crazy. good. But like, what the fuck, dude? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And now they, they all just kind of took a shit this past week. Yeah. Um, or the past few days even, but I guess I'll just hold on to it. Yeah. Staking, dude. You yeah. Just got to yeah. hold. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we got off on a tangent there, but, uh, that'll happen with crypto. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's fucking cool, like the ideology behind it. Yeah, it's fun. I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a new thing, and, you know, any kind of chance that we can get to, like, wiggle out some of the shitty parts of the financial system that we have in place now, like, I'm willing to throw down a little money on that. For sure, yeah. yeah. Get out from underneath that thumb some. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Sure. That has nothing to do but art uh, with art, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, we yeah, got yeah. onto it from oh, NFTs. No, this is what so. I wanted to ask you: um, Have you ever accepted like Ethereum or Bitcoin in exchange for like a, a piece of artwork? I have, yeah, a nice. couple of times now. Um, more, more recently, just now for Andrew's show. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, we had a couple of pieces that sold from uh, from Ethereum, which yeah. is cool. Um, it's nice to just to be able to converse with the artist about that and see for how sure. they feel, because yeah. again, you know how gas fees are. Mm-hmm. If you don't, then, you know, do a little digging and you'll find out and won't be happy. But right. <laughs> uh, it, I think it's easier like with Andrew, you know, we were approached by it and I was like, hey, you know, we have somebody that wants to buy something with Ethereum. Like, how do you feel? And he was like, yeah, I'm about it. And I was like, OK, cool. I'm going to just going to let them pay you directly because it again, comes to me. They're going to get charged a fee. And then when I have to do it to you, it's going to get charged a fee. fee. Yeah, it could change in that small time frame. Right, right. I was like, I'm just going to let them handle it directly to you. you nice. Know? So, um, yeah, I mean. 
maybe if it becomes a, a little more stable, quote unquote, you yeah, know, yeah. then we could accept it and then pay artists out that way. But again, I think it's just easier to communicate and just be like, how do you feel about this? You know, how do you, oh, absolutely, are you yeah. okay with crypto? Most of the artists that I work with, uh, I have come to find out, well, I don't want to say most, a good amount, uh, are into the crypto world now yeah, um, yeah. and have, you know, accepted crypto as payment yeah, um, or just are heavily invested in it. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, yeah, I think there's something that vibes uh, with a creative person and the whole idea behind crypto. Yeah. And I, I can't exactly put my finger on it right this second, but it, it's just the fact that it's new, I think, and innovative. Yeah. And, and we're drawn to that. For sure. And it's, you know, I know that uh, Andrew even talked about it on the show a little bit, like, but his relation, his like relationship to pricing his pieces is... Like, I think, you know, this piece could be $5,000, you know, yeah. but it, it is what it is. And, uh, crypto is kind of like, it's kind of different, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like sort of, yeah, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, he could get paid one day and it's, you know, this $1,800 piece and then tomorrow it's worth $5,000, exactly. you know? Yeah. So yeah. Instant, uh. I don't know. I don't want to say inflation, but you know, <laughs> that, that price hike, it's there. Yeah, for sure. Um, so one question I wanted to ask you is, do you have any, uh, like brutal facts about the art world that you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, outside of what I've already kind of shared about, you know, the, the racket of paying to get into a gallery. Um, I mean, I'm still what I view uh, in my art career, even as a gallerist, even though I was at New Conscious for five years and now I'm doing this, I'm in the adole ad adolescent stages, you know, sure, I'm, a, sure. I'm a baby, you know, like, yeah. I'm. there are galleries that have been around for a while and they're crushing it and like, you know, selling every single show out and, yeah. you know, they're doing things that sometimes you don't even realize are going on. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's plenty of shady things that happen in the art world. Um, maybe it doesn't even have to be brutal, but just maybe something that like people aren't completely aware of. Like, yeah, when I found out the, the $10,000 thing like that, you know, like yeah. paying to get into a gallery mm -hmm. that kind of blew me away. Although I wasn't surprised, but I was also like, Oh, it, like things make a little bit more sense now. Yeah, it's almost like a pay for an exposure type of thing, but mm -hmm. you're paying for the exposure. Yeah. It's just it, weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of magazines, top ones that we were talking about earlier that are mm -hmm. paid to play, you yeah. know, which is kind of unfortunate that they're not just like sharing it for the love of the art. I can't be, I don't work there, so right. I can't yeah, speak yeah. 100% of the time saying that like this is 100% what's going on. Right, right. But from what I do know, there is a lot of that. Yeah. Um, but it makes sense again as a business model for magazines because they're, they you know, print magazines. Yeah, it's and they like got to make their money. Yeah. Live these days. Exactly. As a print magazine. So there's that. I I I don't know if there's anything like brutally true that I can share. I mean, there's things that I disagree with. You know, like I'll I'll never try to to sell somebody on a painting as a commodity where I'm like selling a fucking used car or something. You right. Know? Or I'm trying to talk you into it and tell you why it's a great investment, like a lot of other people do, or crazy inflate prices for pieces. Um, right. Yeah. I, I think something that I do mm. that is different from a lot of other galleries is like, I don't, I don't set prices for artwork. I have a conversation with the artists. I let mm. them set the price. We already have our percentages worked out. It's like an understanding. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've had artists be like, well, what do you sell your works at? Maybe I, that's what I should list my stuff at. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not how this should work. Because again, yeah. if you've been selling your pieces for, you know, this much money and you come and work with me and then they're now this much money and it's like a crazy inflation. Like that's not going to look good for a gallery and people are going to be like, this dude's just taxing me, you know? And like, that's not what it's about. Again, like I said before, I'm not about trying to make a crazy amount of money off of the artwork. Um, yeah. And I don't know. I'm, I'm not about selling trophies. Like I said before, like right. a lot of other galleries are just like, how do I get these in people's hands? Like mm -hmm. that's the ultimate goal. I don't really care about anything else and they'll do whatever they can to try to get it in there. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I think inflation is crazy. Auction houses are wild. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, I don't think people realize they're, they're like, oh, this 
piece sold for this much money and then you're not thinking about like if it came from a private collection then they're paying a certain amount of money to the auction house and it's usually a crazy high percentage and then on top of that then they're having to pay taxes on that so you know something that sold for a crazy amount of money they're it's like winning the lottery you know like yeah, yeah. you're only walking away with a small amount yeah in comparison to like what it actually sold for and have you, have you watched those auctions where they bring out just like an amazing like Picasso or Rembrandt or something they auction it off and no one claps until the gavel rings and they're like $300 million or yeah. whatever. And people are like clapping for the money. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's weird. It's a weird it's, concept. Yeah, it know? is weird. It's like, what are we doing this for? Really? It's, yeah, yeah. it's like all these people just trying to look at an investment and which it, isn't necessarily the case across the board. You know? Yeah, but for it's, sure, it's, for it's sure. a weird way of sending a message like that when for sure. Know. And it's like, it, I'm not mad at anybody, especially like galleries for trying to make money. It's like, you gotta, of course, make money, stay in business. Yeah. But like, there is like a difference between having artists that you love in your gallery and having stuff that you like know will sell. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, and I think, and again, I don't want to talk about it too long, but I think that that's why people got so excited about NFTs. Yeah. Is because it cuts out a lot of the, like the middleman kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And I also think that like people want to be associated with greatness, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you have a Picasso, uh, people want a piece. They mm -hmm. want, right. They're like, oh, let me ride the coattails of this. Right. I mean, I think at that point it's a part of history. Yeah. yeah. So they're like, I want to own a part of history myself, you know? For sure. For sure. And I'm saying more like the middlemen, like, uh, an auction house gotcha okay. you know what i'm saying yeah like they're like oh uh, we can sell you this and it's like i wish that you know it was more like direct you know c2c i guess what they would call it in the business world like consumer to consumer mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know not to go off on the crazy middleman tangent there because i mean i mean we get a, we get yeah. a bad rep you yeah, know yeah. i've had people who have contacted artists that i've worked with and been like, hey, I'm really interested in your piece. And it's like on the wall. We just had the show. They'll be like, I'm interested in your piece, uh, but I don't want to pay the gallery tax. And they're like, what? They're like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, yeah. It, whether it's in the gallery or not, like that's the price that it's going to be. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like exactly. I think it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad misconception. And there's a lot of people that have made it that way where, I'm, again, I guess these are some of the other things, you know, that there are certain price sheets for certain people that uh, you know a certain class of people that come out you know like yeah, yeah. oh we know this person has money so like we got the we're other price so, yeah so we're gonna we're gonna jack that price up yeah or they don't give people the time of the day because they don't look a certain way you know like, yeah, yeah which yeah. is also wild and it's so weird yeah or like a, a certain spaces just aren't welcoming like they you again they're just judging you you know you're coming mm. in and they're just like this dude's gonna waste my time and you're like dude you're just like it's not it's not what it's about it's like going know? into Saks fifth avenue like dress like me or something you know? yeah or me yeah and then they're just like you <laughs> bum like what are you doing and then here? you're like i'd like this five thousand dollar jacket please yeah and they're like sir you that's five thousand <laughs> u.s dollars <laughs> you know and you're like yeah i, I know i got it yeah. But I mean, that's kind of super weird, but it gives the rest of us a bad name, you know, mm. like people have the misconception where it's like, it's a generalized thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, oh, the price is this because of the gallery. And you're like, no, no, no. the gallery helps establish the value. And there are other galleries that are like setting value on things, whether mm. it's appropriate or not, like it happens. Yeah. Um, which is fine, but you know, it's, I don't know. It might be appropriate too. Like just to give them the benefit of the doubt, like they just might know their clientele true yeah you know i mean there are gallerists or dealers that you know are appraisers you know yeah, yeah. and and have the ability to say why something is worth this much money for sure but, you know i think it's a pretty generalized understanding well maybe not for people who are on the outside but that yeah, like yeah. Uh, the value of art is established by different factors the yeah, artist yeah. the collector the gallery and a couple others that have to be kind of like in agreement to be like you know, yeah. this is why it's this price because everything else is aligning for it, you yeah. know, and also uh, a track record, you know, yeah. like the manager's been selling his pieces for this much money for this long. So that's why it's worth this much money. Yeah. You know, and it's it's so hard to price your pieces as an artist in the first place. Mm -hmm. Like I've even asked galleries before that I've shown in, like, what do you what do you think I should price this at? Because mm -hmm. like, you know, I also don't want to outprice myself right too early. Like. Cause you would think that like selling a $10,000 piece would be great. Right. Right. But then like, 
if you can't keep making $10,000 pieces and selling them, you know, it's like, you can't really, it's like weird to come down. Right. You, know you don't want to do that. It's like wipe an egg off your face type of scenario, you know? Yeah. yeah I yeah. keep, I mean, I've had this conversation with a lot of different artists, but I, I, there's, if, if you're, if you're taking it on as a career, like there's no rush to get to that finish line, whatever the finish line price is for you, right. you know, like right. you want your collector base to come with you because yeah. like you're progressing in life. So are they, Yeah. if they love and support you as much as they want to in the beginning, you want them to be able to come with you the entire time. And they'll yeah, yeah. understand, like you've been putting the work in, you've been progressing, your work is getting so much better. Like it's, mm -hmm. it, it is worth this much more money. Um, and you know, like, like they said, this you're in it for the long haul. You know, yeah. like you don't need to just like jump from A to Z real quick and just be like, I'm selling $10,000 works. And then you like, how long are you going to be able to do that? You yeah, know? yeah. Like, I hope that you can. That's yeah. great. That'd be but awesome. like, yeah, you don't want to like hyperinflate suddenly and then have to backtrack because you're having trouble selling them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I think it's also a super important factor to like consider, you know, if you have, you know, one to three super strong collectors and like you're consistently selling works at a certain price and then you raise it. But it's just those three people that keep buying your stuff, you know, that you need to make sure that like you're being real about like what you're setting your value at because yeah, you're good in a spot with those three people buying those pieces. But then, you know, what about everyone else that's going to want to want a piece, you know, are they going to yeah, be yeah. able to get it for that, you yeah. know? And so I don't, like I said, it's a bunch of different variables that are involved to like make it what the value is for the piece of artwork. Yeah. Yeah. It's so difficult. Um, but that's just something I think that, uh, that, I mean, I wasn't really aware of until two years ago, three years ago or yeah, something. Like it's that. a weird thing to think about. Yeah. yeah. Like I just been painting this in my studio, dude. Yeah. I don't know. What is it worth? Like, yeah. what, what do you think it's worth? Yeah. There's different... a lot of times that people hit me up. I'm like, well, what, what would you pay for it? Yeah. That's a good way. You and know, sometimes it's right on and sometimes it's like <laughs> appallingly low. Yeah. You're like, don't, thanks for the insult guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm not giving you a deal well, like that. Well, which is, you know, I think just people just don't know sometimes. For but, sure. But uh, yeah, they're also coming at it from a perspective of like, well, what can I spend? Yeah. You yeah. Know? And yeah. so they're like, I only got this much to spend. So I'm hoping you're going to say it's, yeah. it's worth this much money. Yeah. It, the other uh, aspect of that too, when you were saying like, you don't want to say, sell like a piece for 10,000 and then have to lower it later Yeah, yeah. is, uh, you know, let's say you do sell a piece for 10,000 and you, then you have another piece that you same size, same amount of work, all that. Yeah. And, but you have to sell it for 2000, you know, exactly. then what is that person who bought it for 10,000 going to think? Are they going to continue buying pieces from you? Because then you have to have a conversation with them and explain why you had to lower it. Otherwise, they're going to be like, did you just pull a fast one on me, dude? Yeah, yeah, like, exactly. what happened? Why, why did I pay five times as much as what you're selling it to so-and-so over here now? Yeah. You know, it's, it's super weird. I mean, it's finicky. You know, you have to, it's a balance. Yeah, it's it's just tough. And I think that like, you know, I think mostly artists listen to this and it's just something to be aware of, I guess. For sure. Yeah, take your time. Everybody, yeah. there's no rush. If and you, if, and also, like, to get back to that, like, what's, you know, you, the only thing you're solving with, like, selling a $10,000 painting or whatever number it is, right, it's all of a sudden is you have that amount of money. Right. It's like, you're not going to solve, like, all the, you know, all the voices in your head, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like, oh, I'll be happy when X happens, right? Right, yeah. And then X happens and you're like, you choose other things to be like, oh, well, now I'll be happy when right. I sell one for 20000 or for I sure. get the house and have the family, and, you know, like whatever it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. I right. feel like it's good to set goals. You know, it's always good to be ambitious, but I feel mm -hmm. like when you're just chasing after money, it can be fleeting if you right. get it, you know, right. like it can be gratifying or, you know, you can just, just get distracted and you're like, well, now what? Yeah. You know, like, how am I going to do the next big thing? Yeah. That, like uh, something that I've come to realize just about life in general lately is that like you'll always have um, a person will always have problems to solve to one extent or another, I think. For sure. Yeah. It's like, and as soon as you solve one, you're like, okay, well now I can move on to the next thing that needs my attention. Right. Yeah. That's just what I've found. I don't know. And so I think it's just good to, I just wanted to say that like, Money will f solve your financial problems, but there's other... I ideally. Yeah, ideally. Yeah. It might not even do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to make sure that you're good at like saving or spending because some people get that, yeah, yeah. that first big paycheck and then they spend it like super crazy. Yeah. 
you know, and then they're back to square one where they're like, I made that money and now it's all gone. Like, what do I do? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so what's your superpower? (laughs) If I had one? No. Okay. So, (laughs) so two, two, two parts to this question. Okay. One, what's your current superpower? Like that you do have, like they, what would your friends say that, that you're really good at? Speaking very softly. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. I think everyone will get from this podcast. (laughs) Yes. Oh, shit. Hang on a second. They're just going to sleep mode. Panic attack averted. It's going to show... (laughs) It's going to show me going, shit. <laughs> I guess I can edit that out. You got to okay. leave it in, man. Huh? You got to leave it in. Yeah, I got to leave it in. Yeah. Yeah, for anyone who's just on the audio version, which I think is most people, uh, I looked over at the video camera and it was a uh, blank screen. So I wanted to make sure it was still on. Yeah. Doing your part. Really need a producer. <laughs> um I'm going to call Mike Dempsey out because he is letting me borrow this camera and he also said he'd be my producer today. There you go. Shouts and also put him on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Mike. Yeah, um, thanks, Mike. Okay, your superpower, but for real. like Still uh, one that I have? One that you have and then one that, just to be silly and stupid at the end of this, one that you would want. Which one would you want? Man, I feel like this is a tough one for both. Yeah. Uh, cause it's hard to big up yourself, you know? Yeah. I don't know. That's, I'm not good at doing that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> I, I've, I've, here, here, if you want me, yeah, uh, let me get I a little can, help from you. Okay. So you should crowdsource this kind of thing. Right. This, right. That's what people have told me. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying is, is like, if you ask some of your close friends, but from my, you know, we're good acquaintances, I'd say. Yeah. Like we haven't kicked it that much. We bonded over comedy earlier. Yeah, that was cool. That's great. But um, what I get from you is like, it, you might even be onto something when you say the soft spokenness. Yeah, because like you seem very like secure. You know what I mean? I'm glad it comes off that way. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, you're just sweating. Yeah, yeah. I was in panic mode, anxiety. Yeah. No, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm pretty calm for the most part. Yeah. Uh, I don't really react emotionally to a lot of things. I feel like I'm pretty, I don't know, rational and logical about mm-hmm. a lot of circumstances and situations. For sure. Um, I don't know if that's a superpower or not. You know, I think it can be. I mean, it comes in handy for sure. For me, for me, a definite, like coming from my per, per like, you know, artist perspective, mm-hmm. I'm not always rational. Yeah. Like I take a lot of risks. I mean, you got to do it though. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's a risky game that we're in. It's fun. Yeah. It's a fun thing for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can be gratifying. Yeah. Yeah. It can also be horrifying at the same time, you <laughs> yeah. know, but it's all, you're riding the wave, you know, you got to yeah. ride it for the ups and the downs. You can't have, you know, the light without the dark type of situation. So. Totally. Totally. Yeah. But you come off as very like centered, level headed to me. I'll take to that. Me. I'll take that. From the outside. Good. Good. I like, like a, I hope to be. There might be a crying little child in there. <laughs> <laughs> but like your outward persona is really you're just calm. Yeah. I mean, I think I just have a routine that I like that keeps me pretty centered. You Let's know? talk about it. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> uh I mean, the gym is a big thing for me. It always yeah. has been, you know. I feel like it's my my meditation. Mm-hmm. If I don't get the gym in for a couple of days, like I feel it mentally for sure. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I, my focus isn't the same. Uh, my motivation isn't always the same unless I just crack out on caffeine, yeah, um, yeah. which can be overwhelming sometimes, you totally. know, and then you yeah. just don't sleep well, uh, or you just get distracted easy, you know, cause then you get AD, ADD and you're just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, looking at all these different things. You don't get shit accomplished. You mm-hmm. think you do. And then at the end of the day, you're like, man, I did like a little bit of that and a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, but and my list is, is the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, that's a, that's a big part of my, my routine and has been since I was like, I don't know, 12, 14 years old, something really? like that. Yeah. Nice. Um, been a big part of my life. So, uh, there's that, um, my pup now also, you know, making sure that I take her out and 
get her some play time. I mean, you saw how energetic she was earlier. I can't. Oh, yeah. I cannot tucker her out. I have one of my own. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's still pretty young too, right? You and oh, Mike yeah. got sisters, brothers, yeah. brothers, sister, sisters, sisters. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, and it's a blue healer. So yeah, just yeah. ball of energy. Wild. Yeah. Psycho. <laughs> Psycho. Yeah. Love so, it. I mean, yeah. So the gym, the pup, you know, work. It's really nice having the space, and you know, like uh, COVID, not having the restrictions and not being able to operate anymore. Mm-hmm. Or that we can't operate, I should say. Is, yeah, yeah. Because working from home is fun and all, but like there's something different about not rolling out of bed and then just being at your desk. Yeah. You know? And then actually like, you know, leaving the home to go and like work somewhere, whether it's your studio in another room or another building or, you know, coming here to yeah, the gallery yeah. and like working. Um, yeah. I noticed that for the first time in the past year and a half. Yeah. Because I'm using Mike's garage that he okay. was using. Yeah. And it's just, uh, I love it. It's weird, right? I mean, I think it, that there's it, just so many distractions at home. Mm-hmm. You know, it's easy to get into your comfort zone and like to get into relax mode because that's what you're used to doing there. Right, right. And so when you have to combine like work and that there, it's just it's like, weird. yeah, it's easy to slip into one or the other. Yeah. Um, or harder to get into one or the other, one mm-hmm. of the two. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, being Yeah, that too. Like the flip side of it is like at, you know, whatever, midnight, you're still like emailing people and yeah. And all that kind of stuff, which I'm definitely guilty of. Yeah, same. I mean, that's the thing with running a gallery also and being an art dealer and stuff is like it doesn't it doesn't turn off when you have yeah, people yeah. that are up at all hours of the night in America or international collectors or whatever or yeah. artists too that I have to communicate with because I work with a lot of international artists. Like, mm-hmm. you know, their time is totally different than mine. Um, I've got to basically be on a call like all the time. Yeah. Which is interesting, you know. So yeah. but it's it's part of the game and I, I like it. You know, it's fine because then it makes me feel productive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm always yeah. working. I'm always getting some shit done. So right, right. it's cool. Right. Um, Do you have trouble turning off, like relaxing? Uh, I I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I- inwardly, if we were like at a beach resort somewhere, I'd probably look like on the You'd outside. Be looking at your phone. Now on the outside, I'd be like looking like I'm, you know, in the moment. But mm-hmm. I think inside, I'd just be like thinking about the next like day or two, or what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like what I should have been doing before I left, type of shit. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. It's that stuff's hard. It is. Yeah, yeah. it's like setting boundaries with yourself. Yeah. In a way, and it's like you think like, oh, I'm just myself. Like, why do I need to set boundaries? Yeah. And But then like, you know, you're up at 2 a.m. like staring at your phone screen and asking someone if they want to be on your podcast. <laughs> and you're like, wait a second, what am I doing? Uh, like, you're working still, I man. I should sleep. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, this could wait till tomorrow, but I should just, sometimes you just get a strike in the moment, you know? That's true too. Yeah. I so. love how like everything we're saying, we're, we're just like immediately contradicting ourselves. Yeah. You got to play devil's advocate with yourself. Yeah. All that self-reflection. That's good. Yeah. You know? I, I agree. I agree. You're hearing both sides out or all the sides, I guess. Yeah. If there's yeah. more than two. Yeah. So, um, okay. So what kind of superpower would you want? It can be, it can be real world or it could be like flight or something like that. Okay. I don't know. I've been trying to watch some superhero stuff lately since I had a little bit of time to do that, but yeah. Man, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Flying or teleportation would be kind of tight. Yeah. You know? No. Yeah. Like I guess it's, it has to do with travel. That's kind of weird, both of those things. Yeah, yeah. I don't do a lot of traveling anyways, but mm. uh, maybe it's also efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want fast, efficient travel. No, yeah. I don't. I have no idea, to be honest. I don't know. Those two things seem like they'd be kind of cool, but are they practical? I don't know. Yeah. Like, how are they going to help people? <laughs> Am yeah. I uh, just a, uh, hey, do you need a ride somewhere real yeah. quick? Like, I got you. Yeah, like, yeah. hang on. We'll teleport. You know, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. It's strange. Uh, you could have said, you know, if you wanted to be really altruistic, uh, being able to generate uh, free energy for the world to power itself on. See, I should know? have been a little more you know? like uh, for the people, yeah, you know, and not so <sighs> selfish with it. <laughs> um, it's a strange question to ask. I've is. heard you ask it on the podcast, so I should have probably been a little more prepared for it. But. Well, and in, in I think like I wanted to ask that second part too, just because it's like it just gets you, it gets people thinking too, yeah. like. Real world superpower is what I had asked before previously. Like, what would a real world superpower define as? I mean, like patience, like okay, crazy patience. Yeah, yeah. like I think I, I have that. I know that yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think I'm <laughs> super patient. I think like 
I'm also persistent. Yeah. You know, it's a good quality. I just keep doing the thing. Yeah. And I have, uh, I think I've learned how to temper my expectations, I think. Okay. Yeah. Which is, that's another big one, but I've only learned that, you know, I wasn't, I think all those things are learned actually. For sure. I mean, some come intuitive to a degree, you know, but you, you can always learn more about them. Yeah. Or dive into them deeper. I mean, the expectations thing is a big one. Uh, yeah. They're all big. But yeah, expectations is a thing to, I don't know, you set them too high and then you're going to have yeah some pretty big fall from it or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like I'm trying to sell prints right now, this new painting that I just made. Mm-hmm. That's what you posted today, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and I found myself like, you know, I did, I don't know, Instagram's so weird. Like we would do mm-hmm. a whole fucking episode on social media and like... <laughs> how how i have like a, a bit of resentment there yeah um it's a love-hate thing yeah yeah because i mean that's what they do right that's what a that's what an abusive partner does too. it's toxic yeah it's yeah. toxic <laughs> so toxic they're like reward 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 take it all away yeah oh you're trying to sell a print no nah. yeah so if you want to buy my prints <laughs> um check it out but no like i found myself getting angry because i was like i mean i think it now I'm just going to sound like a bitter old man. No, not a bitter old man. Like I'm uh, uh, toot my own horn here, but I think it's the best painting I've ever done. Okay. Personally. Um, for you now know, might not be everyone's favorite, but, uh, but anyways, I was like, how did I, how have I only sold two prints yeah. so far? I mean, that's another thing. That's just, there's so many variables involved that could exactly be anything, you know, it's, it's hard to be like, okay. You know, at this point I'm like, it's not me. Is no. it? And then I'm like, is it? And it's like, okay, no, 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 it's not me. Yeah, it's not all me. the self-doubt. But then it's like I get angry and I'm like, I'm not angry at the at people because, of right. course, of course, like no one owes you shit. Right. right? And it's like, a luxury that you're yes, selling something and it's like a luxury. That. Yeah. But it's also like, the you know, I don't know. I think I'm mad at Instagram is what I'm trying to say. I mean, their algorithm is fucked. And they and just they keep never tell us the worse. rule. No. You yeah. know, like there's no rules. And it's, it's always like Forbes being like, Hey, this is the new algorithm. This is how you get shit done. Or I don't know. Forbes may be a bad example, but you know, <laughs> it's like someone random where you're like, this is how you got to do it now. The reels and like saving yeah, posts. Yeah. Like that's how you're going to get like on the top of the feed now for your, you know, your audience. It's yeah, like, yeah. it's wild. I don't like to save things. Yeah, I don't yeah. like to get on the reels. Like I'm still yeah, yeah. old school where I'm just like on Instagram on the feed, you know, exploring yeah. people's pages and stuff. It's, yeah. it's strange. Maybe everyone just spent all their money on Andrew's paintings. Yeah, that's probably it. You know, so yeah. give him a little And bit. big congrats to Andrew, too. I, I don't, you know, I think I said something to him at the show, but I just want to reiterate, like, his, I mean, I think his work is some of the best out there yeah. right now. And Andrew it's, is phenomenal. It's underappreciated. Maybe I'll get a few shots for the Patreon. Uh, yeah, feel free to. Yeah, I'd Of love. your, like, full gallery at the end here. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, Andrew did a amazing job. I feel like he leveled up, and I know I couldn't be happier with... Uh, a christening show um, yeah. in the space, you know, he, he put a lot of work into it and I don't know, I think it shows. And yeah, man, I, I said this last week with John too, that it was just so great to, to come out and, and see everybody Yeah. again. Like we were all in one place and like, and it wasn't the fucking internet. Right. And it was so yeah. nice. Yeah. It was so refreshing. A you little know? bit of a normalcy. Coming yeah. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's uh, my rant against social media. Yeah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> that's my TED talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they're gonna sell, man. They're, it's a good piece, you know. So and, yeah, I, I, and we don't need this to be a therapy session. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let it be positive, you know, support. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, thanks for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. This has been man. a great talk. Thank you for having me on. It's, yeah, it's absolutely, fun. man. I think that you you've been a you've been a pillar in our in the art scene and here in Denver for a while. And, um, uh, I know that me and a lot of other people admire how you move and what you do and, and your, your values. And thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I appreciate it. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't do it without the support, you know, so it's, it's fun. That's all I really have to say. It's fun and I'm glad and I'm grateful that I get to do it, you know? Oh yeah. And so I'm glad for people like you to be, here and for it and supportive and you know we to be part of each other's reality in that sense so oh yeah it's fun stuff so sweet and uh thanks everyone for listening and come out to the next show if you have a chance yeah june 12th let's plug Uh, that yeah irene leon lopez 
Uh, I'm sorry. I always mess her name up. I always switch the two L's. Irene Lopez Leon. There we go. Okay. And Yuri Martinez. Um, doing a split show, two person exhibition. Both have solo works and some collaborative works. Both Spanish artists. Uh, Going to be a good one, I think. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm super familiar with Irene's work. Big yeah. fan. Yeah, she keeps changing her style. Like it's pretty cool, progressing from those landscapes to like nature, and now she's doing these like pop culture. Pop, yeah, pop culture still lifes. Yeah, yeah. They're rad. I mean, those have been getting a really good reception, and Yuri is rad too. I mean, his pixelated faces and his imagery that he's been incorporating recently, getting away from nature so much and just using a lot more. I don't know what we just have in reality. It's it's a lot of like Spanish focused stuff, but hmm. like that's directly around him, I should say. Mm-hmm. But it's it's cool. It's really dope. Um, nice. but yeah it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be a fun one june 12th june 12th yeah 5 to 11 so awesome. plenty of time to make it down so yeah that's at what's the address 2647 west 38th avenue denver colorado denver colorado and you're open yep tuesday through saturday gotcha. uh, noon till 6 p.m or nice. or by appointment if you can't make it by then sweet so, sweet yeah. well yeah i'll uh, i'll link everybody in the description to websites instagrams all those good things awesome and thanks again man absolutely dude it's been fun yep all right do it again peace later thank you again for listening to another episode of rtaf podcast if you are interested in supporting the patreon that address is patreon.com slash rtaf podcast And I want to thank all my patrons. You guys keep this engine running. I couldn't do it without you. Go over there and check out the tiers I have available. Includes video, uh, guest suggestions, uh, patron-only posts, and some merchandise. Thank you again for listening. Please rate, review, subscribe. Do all those little things that help get RTAF into the consciousness of more and more people. Shout out.